those songs bring back a lot of memories. Never, never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit to work in a person's life through some of those old songs. As I was, when I was a child, after I was sent to bed at night, my father had a cassette player, one of those great big cassette players in the days of cassettes, and a couple of big speakers, and he would play some of that music, some of those very songs at night after I'd gone to bed, and I would, the sound would filter up through the rafters, and I would listen to that, and it had a big impact on my spiritual journey. So please stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You may be seated. Good morning. Wow. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the characters known as Transformers. Does everyone know the Transformers? In one form, they're robots. In another form, they're a car, a plane, a dinosaur, a, a political figure. Well, maybe not that, but... Um, the concept was so popular 20 years ago that the toy stores were filled with them. There were cartoons on Saturday mornings. There were several movies. In fact, they're still making the Transformer movies. And you, you know that you've arrived when McDonald's made Transformer toys. I still may have some somewhere where the hamburgers and the, and the french fries and the shakes turned into little robot-type things. In fact, I have my own Transformer. You've probably seen this before. The kids aren't here. Um, but I found this one a, f a few years ago, and I, I really like it. This is just a medallion or something, but well, you've got to be smarter than the toy. There it is. It transforms into a robot. If you would like to see this more closely, come and see me after church. You can't have it, but you can see it, and it's a whole lot of fun. But you know, when I was growing up, back in the Dark Ages, what does that mean for some of you other people, right? <laughs> right. But when, back in the Dark Ages, all we had were plain old army men, you know, and balls and that sort of thing. But, but as I think about it, that Transformer concept was just as valid back then. He, here's what I mean. We, growing up, we took a lot of things like cardboard boxes and blankets and, and tree branches, and we transformed them, mostly in here, right, into planes and cars and spaceships. We used our imagination. You know, that's something that seems very foreign to a lot of kids and, and even adults today. But the transformer concept is really a statement about our society as it is today. Nothing is ever exactly like it seems anymore. I mean, if you meet a straightforward businessman or, or politician <laughs> who isn't a transformer, it's a miracle. The sad, sad part is that a lot of Christians are transformers too. During the week, they're one thing, but come Sunday morning, they're transferred into something totally different. Not too many amens, but how about an ouch or two, right? Well, we've been working through some goals that God has given us, given me to help us on the journey to become more like Jesus. I want to remind us of them. I'm still trying to keep, get them memorized, but the first one was this, um, God, of God's goals for us, to become keenly aware of God's presence in our daily lives. Folks, if we can accomplish this, if, if you can just sense God's presence all the time in your daily lives, what a change that'll make. What a change that'll make. That's our goal, number one. Number two, to help us hear God's voice with consistency and clarity. Number three, to make talking with God a normal part of our every day. Number four, we talked about it last week, to inspire us to dream bigger dreams and take bigger risks. And today, number five, is to remind us that con truly connecting with God will change everything. 
meaning will change us, and through us, meaning change every person, every situation, every problem, every circumstance in our life. I can't even read my own writing. Today is number five. To remind us that truly connecting with God will change us, and when God changes us, it changes everything. Have, have you ever noticed that when you're praying for answers? And it especially works this way when you're praying for a person who you have a hard time with. You guys ever pray for someone you're having a hard time with? Don't answer. Don't say their name. But I'm discovering in my own life, and maybe you found it true in your life too, when I am praying, God, you know this person, and you know that the, 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 they got problems. God, would you straighten them out? And most of the time, you know who God straightens out? Me. He changes me. He changes me. Well, in our scripture today, Paul is talking about transforming, but the kind of transformation that is permanent and life-changing and radical, the, the kind of change that really connects us to God and the kind of change that makes people do a double-take and stop and notice and even ask the question, what in the world is wrong with you? In the most positive sense there is. The key verse today, you figured it out by now, is do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. So number one this morning, i got a question. Are you a conformer? Are you a conformer? The scripture says, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world. Don't. I realize that we all understand what don't means don't we? As parents, we've probably said it a few thousand times to our children as they're growing up. Right, Sarah? <laughs> Maybe. Jean-Luc, have you said it a couple times to Sarah? Pretty good. How about the boys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But interesting... <laughs> Because we hear it so often, because people say don't so often, it loses some of its impact when we read it in the Scripture as the Word of God. You see, in this passage today, this is not a casual statement, but it is a command from the Apostle to his readers and to us today, God's church. When we present our bodies, ourselves, to God as living sacrifices, then the next, should, the next step should, should happen automatically. Now that you are presenting, and, and we can't do it once and then forget about it, we must present and keep on presenting and then live up to that commitment. Now that you're presenting yourselves to God, you must no longer blend into the crowd. You are to quit using the pattern of the world as a guideline for your behavior. In fact, I command you, don't do it anymore. There's no L or else attached but the emphasis is there. Whenever a command is given, there's a consequence for disobedience. We don't hear it today as much as we used to and probably ought to, so, so I have to be perfectly honest with you. There is a cost for disobedience. There is. Now, now hear me, I'm not just talking about hell, although that is the ultimate outcome for a life choice of disobedience. But in this reference, the cost that we pay will be a defeated, miserable, useless sort of life. I looked it up just this week to be sure, but we've talked about the statistics of how many people in America, how many Americans profess to be Christians. Do you know what it is today? 2023 statistics say 68% of Americans profess to be Christians. This proves beyond question that profession without practice is worthless. <laughs> you probably heard about the parrot that said, I'm George Washington. Did that profession make him George? Of course not. I, I think there are a lot of people in America today who are professing something that they really don't have. What God loves and what I'm challenging today is not profession, but not just profession, but men and women who have the courage to really practice what I preach. <laughs> More importantly, though, practice what you preach through your life. Look around you in America today, in 2024, 
even at the church, who has to be a part of that 68% who call themselves Christians, we hope. But I, I wonder how many here in the church choose on purpose to obey this command, to not conform to the changing, fluctuating, wishy-washy pattern set for us in this world. How many are choosing intentionally, obeying this command intentionally? I guess the other side is this. How many choose to go with the flow, not to make waves, to live a life of just little compromises? Did you know that the little compromises are still sin? And ultimately, we're conformed to the pattern of the world. What Paul is referring to is the pattern or the schema is the word of the world. This is the outward form that changes day by day. The worldly, earthly, physical, flesh and bone part of us that is continually, continuously altering. It's, it's a part of us that's different at age 17 than it is at age 70. It's the part of our world that place, the part that our world places so much importance on. Our schema, the outward part of us, changes just like a chameleon who takes its color from whatever it's close to. It blends in to what it's, it's near, seldom showing its true colors. For many, this is safe and easy, but if we aren't careful, it can be deadly. It can result in being so caught up in blending and in blending in and not making waves that our witness becomes worthless. I saw a cartoon one time. I couldn't find the picture of a large group of teenage boys who had, who had a great big hoop earring in one ear, and they had a real tall mohawk that was all dyed green. And the person was saying, why? And they said, to be different, of course. You know, it's really easy to be different when everyone's doing it. No one was standing out. It was a herd. Oh. The result for the church is defined in the book of Revelation. Do you remember? And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says these things, I know your works that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That doesn't sound like a real positive statement to the church. Hear me, he's talking to the church. This is not the world, he's talking to the church. Paul makes it very clear that we are not to conform to the pattern of the world. The word he uses even illustrates even more strongly that this pattern isn't the really important part of life. It's only the shell, the, the outside, the ever-changing scheme of things. Instead, he says, he doesn't say it quite this way, but morphine isn't just for butterflies. Morphine isn't just for butterflies. In other words, we are to be transformed. You know, really, this is one of the most wonderful words that we can hear. Transformation is what we live for, what we long for, the chance to be better than we are, to be something new, to cast off the old and put on the new. It's the theme that's been repeated time and time again in novels and movies and, and in man's quest for the meaning of life. We all, all of us, want to be transformed in one way or another. It's built deep into our very nature and our souls. It is a gift from God himself to his creation. The longing, the vacuum, the place inside of us that we spend so much of our time and energy to try and fill. We are created for transformation. The kind that works from the inside out. I don't know if any of you follow Superman, but I still remember that time that he took an old piece of coal and he applied heat and pressure to it, and he transformed it into a diamond. While we spend so much time focusing on the external, the schema, God is doing his work in the morphe, the essential, unchanging part of who we are. Now, no offense, because I have a few of them in my family tree as well. Sorry, Mom and Dad. But you can take a hillbilly... And you can give him or her a haircut, a new suit of clothes. You can send them to the Emily Post School of Etiquette. But you know, <laughs> underneath all that stuff, what do you have? Right, Sarah May? 
Brew Koi. <laughs> yes, Sarah May. But hear me. If God does the work, he and only he can take the morphe, the part that defines who we really, really are, and change it from the inside out. We can change the outside. And that's the part that conforms to the world. But what we're talking about is true transformation that only happens from the inside out. Do you realize how exciting that is? You don't have to stay the way you are. You don't have to stay on the road you're on. You don't have to end up where you're headed if you're not headed where you want to be headed. God can change you from the inside out. Sometimes we feel like we're nothing but an old caterpillar, not a tractor, Lee. When God does the work on that old caterpillar, watch out. He changes the essential part, the inside stuff, and before you know it, a butterfly, a beautiful creature that you never would have recognized for what it is, is created. God works on the inside, changing the essential character. We know this passage Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. What happens to the old? It's gone, and the new has come. When God goes to work, something brand new is created. We're clean, we're fresh, we're beautiful, we're given a new start. The old is completely gone, and all things are new. Well, it's time to get down to the bottom line. If you're serious with God, I mean, if you're really serious with God, there will be a change. I ran across this quote. What's the point of being complete on the outside when you are broken on the inside? Don't try to find your identity in temporary things. They're going to get you to change you. You're going to be someone that God did not make you to be. Do you guys recognize this name? It's this guy. Nick Vujicic. This is a guy that God, who had every reason not to survive, and God has transformed this, this man into a powerful minister of the gospel. God has used him in incredible ways. And he'll look at you, he goes, I have no arms and legs. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Folks, God can use anyone. Well, the transformation will be radical, which means to the limit. You will still be you, but a better you than you ever believed possible. A you that is growing and developing and changing from the inside out. The evidence of whether you are there or not is found in showing of the fruits. The fruits of the Spirit, found in Galatians 5, through 23. Do you know them? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A lot of people say, well, I don't, I'm not very good at those. Well, just like a tree, the fruit isn't, doesn't appear on the tree fully developed, does it? Every one of us has those fruits. If we are truly allowing God to transform us, those fruits are inside of us. Those fruit are inside of us. I guess fruits is not proper plural, is it? Fruit. Any English teachers, don't get on me. The fruit of the Spirit will be growing in you. There are some of them that, are, that develop a lot faster than others. Love, joy, peace. How about this one? Patience. How's that one coming along? Patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. How about this one? Self-control. Some, all of us need work on some of the fruits. On some of the fruits. Only you know if you're a Christian Hear me, but other people can tell if you are truly being transformed by your fruit. By your fruit. Well, there's one more. Real change only happens if it's a, a mind thing. By the renewing of your mind. This is where the transformation really takes place. Any change that doesn't affect us here isn't really a change at all. I've told you about the foot that will defeat us, right? Right? And that is the distance, the foot between our head and our heart. Again, the transformation, the change, the metamorphosis is not just a one-time event, but a continuous, lifelong journey of growth and adventure. 
It isn't enough, hear me, to, to feel conviction and cry a little and get an emotional release. I don't know about you kids who went to camp. I heard there was some great progress that was made. But hear me, the real work, the real, the real test of to whether that transformation has taken place comes in these next few weeks. Like I said, man, it's easy to get close to God. It's, it's easy to get excited about what God is doing when everyone's doing it. But when you have to go out there in the world and face the stuff that Satan throws at you, that's the test. That's the test. We must continue on the journey or we'll never find victory. You see, we serve God with our bodies, but our minds have to tell them what to do. They say, say a mind's a terrible thing to waste. That's true. But any mind, no matter how brilliant, without the work of Christ, will never amount to anything in the big picture. I know we've talked about some of these things before, but we need to really understand some of the ruts that we get into, even in the church. Even in the church. You guys, this is a rut that people get into, and, and it's not a promotion. Sunday school is only for kids. Sunday school is not only for kids, and we're not talking about Sunday school. We're talking about taking God's Word and learning it and investing it, having someone teach it, spending time reading it. It's not just for kids. We all need that. Only certain kinds of music are sacred. You ever heard that before? It is amazing some of the crazy stuff that God has used to touch people's hearts. Music is a gift of God. There are not certain kinds. And I'm talking about styles of music. I'm not talking about words. We understand there's garbage and there's garbage. I don't have to be faithful in my church attendance to be a Christian. Hmm. It isn't necessary to tithe my time, my talents, or my money. How about this? It will never happen to me. And so on, and so on, and so on. You know, I do an illustration in the past. I've done an illustration with kids at camp or, or at uh, chapel at school. And what I do is I, I look for generally, it, it can be a boy, but I generally look for a girl who has long, beautiful hair. And I ask her to come up and stand in front of her peers. And then I give her a big old pair of scissors. And I said, how many of you would like to see this young lady cut her hair? Well, you can imagine what this group does. I mean, you know, a student body going, oh, yeah, that would be great. Cut your hair, cut your hair, cut your hair. And you know what? You think she's going to cut her hair? If she's taken the time to have this long, beautiful head of hair. And I said, here's the point, folks. This is peer pressure. Your peers are pressuring you right now to cut your hair. Why won't you cut your hair? You know what the answer is? Because I don't want to. <laughs> peer pressure is really self-pressure. Giving in to what other people think. Right? That's a rut that we get into. That what other people say is important. More important than what God is telling us and teaching us from the inside. Paul said that transformation will renew our mind. The word that he uses for mind is kanos. Which means we will have a new character and a new nature. The tense indicates that it's more than a single point in time. It refers to a crisis event that is so powerful in its impact that the change it brings will carry on into the future. Hear me, folks. If your relationship with Christ doesn't change you so radically that it carries into the future, then it's worthless. Right? I know a lot of people who are just changed depending on which way the wind's blowing. They're changed just enough to get by. We can give a lot of examples of that. Well, that's just politics. <coughs> that's just campaigning. That's just garbage. Real change will prove it. Here, I, I, I'm not, I'm promoting this with politics. Go vote. Go get educated before you vote. If you want to understand how a person, you know, you know the truest, 
the truest test of how a person will, will behave in the future is how they behaved in the past. So don't take my word for it. It's all public record. Get online and look at how they voted on things. And then you'll know. And then vote. Right? We understand that if the mind decides, the body has no choice but to follow. This is the part of you that really has control. It's the only place that true metamorphosis can happen. Then, when you've been transformed in here, then you'll be able to test and approve God's will for you. Then you'll be able to understand what is really good and excellent and perfect. God wants you to be a transformer in the truest sense of the word. A transformed person who is being used to transform others. There is no greater joy, my friends, than leading someone to the Lord. But better yet, I thought that was the greatest joy, and I've, I've talked about that, but better yet is seeing someone that you have loved and prayed for and disciple lead someone to the Lord. That's when you know it's working. The kind of relationship I'm talking about isn't for wimps or quitters or people who are looking for all the shortcuts in life. It's for people with courage and guts and a desire to really become something for Christ. It takes real men and women to be Christ followers because only real men and women take responsibility for their lives and actions and they do what is right. Hear me, whether they want to or not. Our world is full of fake tough guys who are simply conforming to peer pressure and really have no idea what true manhood is all about. The plan is easy. It's the doing it that's sometimes difficult. Here's a math question for you. When we give 100% of God, how much do we get? It's a trick question. Because a lot of people say, well, if I give 100% of God, that, that leaves zero for me. And I can't tell you how this works, but in his economy... That math doesn't add up. In fact, when we give 100% to God, we get back more, immeasurably more, unbelievably, incredibly more, and any of the losses of the things the world offers are replaced by gains beyond our greatest expectations if we take Him at His word. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Mm, sorry. Allergies are wonderful, aren't they? I think it would be appropriate for the praise team to come and... Um, I think we want to sing that song, The Power of Your Love is Changing Me Again, as we close in a few moments. What a powerful song, what a powerful testimony that gives. But would you bow your heads and uh, pray with me as we get ready to do that. Father, thank you.